right, well, today uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the presence of God and worshiping and praising the Lord. Now, this morning we, we sang some songs, and as you, you, you have to have a life that is uh, where you have your times of worship and praising the Lord, and that needs to be a part. Now, as a believer, we can say, yes, I love the Lord, I worship Him. Now, we don't just worship on Sunday mornings, right? It has to be a lifestyle of worship. And we can be thinking, it's great to worship the Lord, but there's power in worshiping and praising the Lord. And when you spend those quiet times with the Lord and in His presence, and those are vital times in the believer's life that we just can't be thinking these are great ideas to do and not put them in our own lives. Because breakthrough comes during those times of worship. When we don't fill our spirit man and our mind with the spiritual matters, with what God is wanting to pour in and pouring in the word of God and what the spirit of God is wanting to say for the now season. We, we need to have listening ears. And part of that comes through worship and praising and being still in the presence of God. Amen? You have to have that time. A believer in Christ has to have one-on-one -on -one time with the Lord, apart from corporate worship, right? There has to be individual worship in your own life, where you're at your home, you're in your vehicle, in your own time, where you can worship the Lord, you get the music, or you sing praise. Everybody can make a joyful noise, right? I mean, that's not great, but you can make a joyful noise, right? <laughs> we all love to sing along. But God, when you release that praise, it does something to you. When you give God the glory, it does something. So I want to go over those things with you today. And so let's. I'm going to turn to Exodus 33. This will just be our base right now. And we're going to be talking about Moses here for just a moment. So God's wanting to lead Moses into the promised land and they're being prepared and there's a, you know the we always know the israelites are always murmuring and complaining all the time but moses has a great <laughs> mass of people to lead into the promised land and so here we he got moses is saying hey god you're gonna have to be the one that leads me into this land I can't do it without you. I can't do this in my own strength and my own power. Just like anything in our life cannot do it in our own strength, cannot do it in our own power. It has to be God-led, God-inspired, Him leading us, the Spirit of God leading us in those things. So Moses seeking God as he normally would and as we should in our life, Right, we should be seeking the Lord in all of in every facet of our life and in decision makings and where we're being led, hearing His voice. So Moses, we know him. He he sought God and he's like, I, I want to hear from you. And God is saying to Moses, He's saying He wants you to depart. Moses, I want you to depart now. So He's giving him instruction on what to do. So you have to know the voice of God, right, to know what to do. Where to turn, where to veer to, uh, do I go straight, do I go right, left, which way am I going, Lord? And God said to Moses, I want you to depart now. You've been here quite some time, but now it's right, we're going to move on a little bit. So he's telling uh, Moses this. So then we go down, Exodus 33, and in verse 11, he says, And the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks unto his friend. How nice is that, that we can have that conversation with the Lord, that there, there is a way that we can speak to the Lord. And he turned it again into the camp, and his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. And we know that Joshua, he was a great leader, and he loved the presence of God. And I hope you, too, enjoy the presence of God. Or at least after this, you would be drawn to saying, Lord, I want to spend more time in your presence. Now, Joshua was one of those guys that he loved the presence of God, and he hung tight to God, and that was his place, and he's like, I want more of you, Lord, and so he spent time in the tabernacle, so here's, well, this is a little side note, but Joshua was there too, and he, he wanted that presence. He wanted to feel that presence. He would be a part of what God was doing. Verse 12, Exodus 33, verse 12, and Moses said to the Lord, so Moses is speaking to the Lord at this moment, saying, See thou, you say unto me, bring up this people 
and thou hast not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name. How do you guys know God knows you by name? That's just a whole other thing on its own, that you're so special in God's eyes, that he loves you so much that, you know, a name is important. In the name of he, he speaks to you personally. He says, I have a plan for you. I have a purpose for you. And this is what I want for you. But that's a whole other thing. But he, he knew him by name. And thou hast found grace in my sight. And amazing grace. We know the song, Amazing Grace. God has amazing grace that he has poured out to us. And it covers so many things. And it empowers us to live for God. Verse 13 says, Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now the way. Okay, Lord, I need you to show me the way. So he's seeking the Lord. He's wanting to hear from God. Show me the way, Lord, that I may know thee. I want to know you more. I want to know you more intimately. I want to be able to hear your voice and draw close. That I might find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. In verse 14, it says, and he said, my presence, God said, my presence shall go with you. He gave him, okay, and I will give you rest. How does that sound nice? To go with the presence of God and walk in the rest and the peace of God that he has for your life. And this is, this is Moses. He leading a multitude of people trying to hear the voice of God. And so he seeks his face, and he heard God, and he knew the path that he was to take, and God spoke to him. And so he did. He said, my presence shall go with you, and I'm going to give you the rest that you need along the way for the journey. How nice is that? Verse 15, and he said unto him, um, this is most, if your presence go not with me, carry us Carry us not up hence. What does that mean? If your presence isn't here, God, that means we're not going. I am going to only go where your presence leads me and where it guides me. I don't want to do anything. I want to make any decision uh, for these people, for my life, without your presence there. Without your presence, I cannot do anything. I need your leading. I need your guiding. I need your wisdom. I need your instruction because I've got a multitude of people that I am leading. And if I can't hear correctly, uh, how many of you guys know if he made the wrong decision, he had a lot of people on his hands that he was going to have to answer for. And it could go terribly wrong. <laughs> but he always sought the Lord. He always sought God and wanted to hear his voice. And that meant his presence. When his presence was there, he knew, okay, I'm going to follow it. So we need to allow the presence of God in our life. And we need to be led by it. We're to be led by the Spirit. But I want to encourage you, as you worship, as you're praising the Lord and his presence coming, he's going to speak to you. He's going to minister to you and he's going to make you whole and he, he's going to open your heart soften your heart soften your spirit man so that you can hear from him how many of you just go on day after day not being in his presence not worshiping you're going to be thinking on your very fleshly right on what you just kind of know how i've got by in this world this you know i'm okay you know this is how i've always done things you know, I'm making it by all right. But how do you, you know, you can have a sure word from the Lord that when you're in his presence, he ushers in peace. And it brings humility in you as you are in the presence of God. That you, when you're worshiping God, you're before almighty God. And it humbles you. How many of you have been in that place? It humbles you to be in the presence of God. And it puts you in a place where then you can receive from the Lord. And then you want to hear what he has to say. So then your ears are being opened. And God, in that small voice, he, he speaks to you the things that you need. He may be encouraging you. He may be lifting you up out of a place that you're at. Maybe you're in a dark place. And he wants to bring you up and out of that. You know, you may have had the wrong mindset. I mean, you know, the word of God says it's through the word. It's the renewing of our mind through the word of God. Now, we know that, right? That we are to re if we're going to renew our mind, we get in the word and we read it. But we can get, we can just be like, well, I do believe that. But are you acting on it? 
Are you actually in the word and reading it and let it refreshing and reviving your mind, your thoughts, and your emotions and getting them in line with what God says? We need to do that as believers so that our mind is thinking on things above and we can hear what he is speaking to us. That would be a good place, right, to be led by the Lord. And it's simply by getting in his presence, getting in his work. So he said, my presence shall go with you, and I'll give you rest. And verse 15, Exodus 13, verse 15, says, He said unto him, if your presence go not with me, I'm not going. Don't, don't take us out of this place. I'm only going to go if your presence is with us, God. For wherein shall it be known here that I and your people have found grace in your sight? Is it not that thou goes with us? So shall we be separated, I and my people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. So what's going to separate us from all these people on this earth? God's going to be your presence. When your presence is there, you show up. So maybe you're like, I need you to show up, God. Well, are you getting into his presence? Are you spending that one-on-one -on -one time with him to draw in close? Because as we say right here, he promises that if you draw close to him, he promises what? That he will draw close to you. But we have to take that first action. We can't be lazy in our, our living for God and say, God, I need you to show up. God, I need you to show up. Where are you? Well, he's like, I will show up when you show up and draw close to me. Right. You have to take the first step. So all of us as believers have to take that first initial step, that action of taking that first step and worshiping him, getting the thanksgiving and praise. Because as when we worship, we say we enter in his gates with thanksgiving, right? And that can be in your own personal walk with the Lord as you're in your quiet time at home and just playing music and worshiping. Lord, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for redeeming me. Thank you that, um, Lord, that I am blessed and highly favored, God, that you have freed my life from sin and shame. And now I give you the glory. I'm a child of the Most High God. You know, start thanking him for things in your life that he has blessed you with. Thanksgiving goes a far ways with the kingdom. And you open your mouth and you open that door, that gate, and it ushers in the presence of God because you've humbled yourself. You started giving God the glory by thanking him. And automatically as you walk into that Thanksgiving, the presence of God starts coming in. And praise just starts coming out. You come to a place of humility. You're just like, Lord, you are so good. You are so worthy of praise. You've done so amazing things. And you just start worshiping the Lord. So it takes action on our part. We got to be believers that are not lazy in our attitude towards the Lord, but that we take action and we get those one-on-one -on -one times consistently and hearing the voice of God. So he's, he said, all right, Lord, how are we going to be separate from this world out there? How are they going to identify us from them out there? What, what's going to be this difference? And it's the presence of God. He said, the presence of God, I will be with you. And when you walk in the presence of God, you're changed. I mean, you're no longer that one desiring the, the selfish things of this world and the, 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 the desires of the flesh. You know, those things don't draw you. It's the things of God that you are now drawn to. Amen? And verse 17, And the Lord said to Moses, I will do this thing that thou hast spoken. For he found grace in his sight, and I know you by name. And he said, I beseech you, show me your glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness to pass before you. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you, and be gracious to whom I will be gracious. I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And so God honored him, and he showed up in a mighty way to the people, to his people. And we're his people. We're, we're children of the Most High God. And he wants us to be led by his presence. So are the people out there seeing your life? Are they seeing something different in your life? Are you speaking the things of God? Are you giving him the glory for the things that are going on in your life? Are you speaking faith into situations in your life that 
the world would speak differently. Or are you needing healing? You speak the word of God. And, and, you know, you need your mind needs aligned with the word. You have the mind of Christ. Start speaking the word over your life. And be the, the believer. The word of God needs you to be so the world can see the change that's in us. All right, so the presence of God. We need the presence of God. And we sang many songs this morning that when you get a hold of the presence of God, he does amazing things. Light in the darkness, you know, when there's things that are going in our life that just seem dark and dim and dismal, well, God's light shines in those situations. And where there's light, it exposes things. It, it exposes the things of the enemy. So there can be freedom. We can recognize things and freedom can be brought forth because there's freedom in Jesus' name. Amen? And, and we're, we're not going to walk in fear. We see the goodness of God in our life, and we walk it out so that people can see it in our life. And, and we are singing Waymaker here. I was just looking it over, but, you know, he's our way maker. He's the way where there seems to be no way. You know, you hear, we hear this stuff all the time. But when you're going through a situation in life and you're holding on to Jesus for everything that's worth, you're believing God for a situation you're going through. You're believing something for a loved one or you're believing for your healing or for your finances. Guess what? In those times, you're really hanging on to God and you're hearing every word. So when you come into the house of God and there's the word being spoken, guess what? You're hanging on every word because you're like, God, I need something to keep holding on. I need something to keep me hanging on this ride of my healing, Lord, or my finances, Lord, that I, I don't know how you're going to make a way. But, Lord, I know that you will make a way. And as I'm faithful to you, God, and I do what's in the word of God, that I know you are taking care of me. You know, speaking the word of God over your life, over your situations, by faith. By faith. And how many of you guys know it's a by faith, but it's the word of God. His word accomplishes what we speak, all right? It's not going to just go out there and wander around and go away in the void. It says it will accomplish what we speak. So you have to activate your faith. You have to speak it. You have to open your mouth, not just think it. you got to speak it. you got to declare it. Be a believer that walks as a victor, not a victim of something that's happened, but a victor. You are walking in victory and come from a place of victory. And when you see that, when you start speaking the word, you got that roof under you and you declare the word of God. You proclaim it and you stomp on the devil's head. Amen. Amen. And you know that he can't have any foothold. God's bigger. God's mightier than anything you can go through. And so you start speaking to your situations. Speak the word. Dig in the word. Find out what it says. Write it down. Memorize it. Whatever you got to do and start speaking it over your life by faith. By faith. All right, so I wanted to go into some verses on some worship because we need to live also a life as we get in the presence that leads to worship. And what does worship do in our life? So I'm going to go down some scriptures here just so you can listen or change them. I'm not sure. See how fast I go through them here. But let's go to Psalm 8 2. Psalm 8 2. It says, through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemy, enemies. You established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. It says, through the praise of children and infants. Man, how the childlike faith, the child is praise worshiping. How many of you guys know downstairs? They're praising God. They're down there worshiping the Lord. All those kids down there having a good time. Some of them, they, they're new to this. They don't know really what they're doing. But they see other people, and they're learning. They're learning about God, and we're teaching them. And others know, and they're down there having fun and worshiping the Lord. But it says, through the praise of children and infants, you establish a stronghold against your enemies. So praise is powerful against your enemies, defeating what the enemy is wanting to bring in to your life, okay? So John 10.10 10 says the enemy comes to steal kill and destroy so if anything is under that three court those three categories it's the enemy okay don't don't try to put God in any of those situations if it's stealing if it's killing if it's destroying it's the enemy flat down don't don't be having any other mindset sickness disease 
uh, things that come down? Is there things that we do that may cause things to come in our life? Yes. Can we make wrong decisions that bring implications and, and things? Yes. But we have to be smart to understand what the difference is. That Yes, I caused that. Or, you, you know, sin was in the situation. And yes, I, I brought this to my life. Okay, it's not the enemy. It's I did it to myself. But the other situations that you know that you are a part of that, it's the enemy. And we don't want to say, oh, God did this to teach me. No, if it's stealing, if it's killing, if it's destroying in any manner, it's the enemy. And God is there to set you free, to bring freedom to the situation, and bring hope and light to those situations. Can I get an amen? amen. We have to recognize that in our life. And it says after that, that God, Jesus came and gave life and life more abundant. So that's not stealing. That's not killing. That's not destroying. When he wants to give you true freedom, true life, that Zoe life, that fulfilling life in God, that satisfying uh, life that we can get through Jesus Christ, then that's not the enemy. It is God doing that. So Let's recognize what the word says and what the enemy's part is in this matter. If it's stealing, kill, and destroying enemy, God is good. He brings life and the joy and the freedom. Freedom is amazing, you guys. Freedom, it lifts burdens off our life. Amen. Because Jesus says, cast your cares on me. Why are we casting our cares on the Lord? He says, cast your cares on me. Why are you carrying these heavy weights? Why are you taking on all this stuff in your life? Cast your cares. Take them off. Give them to me. I will help you. And guess what? When you truly receive that, that he cares for you, that freedom, of that, that heaviness, when that lifts, I mean, how many of you have experienced a heaviness lifting before? And in, in, in a situation in your life, I have. When you feel that physical weight off and you're like, there's no way on earth I can experience that lifting of way off of my life, off my spirit, man. It is supernatural that God is doing it, and he brings freedom. And then you get to just walk through that situation with the peace of God and the freedom of God. Amen? Amen. That was true. All right. Psalm 149. Psalm 149, uh, verse 5 through 9. Psalm 149, 5 through 9. It says, Let his faithful people... That's faithful. Not just mediocre, lukewarm Christians, but his faithful people rejoice in this honor and sing for joy on their beds. May the praise of God be in their mouths. There's power there, guys. May the praise of God be in their mouths. That means you're 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 praising the Lord. You're you're speaking. You're not being quiet, right? There's no quiet there. It, it is voicing it out. You're awesome, God. You are mighty. And it, So may the praise of God be in their mouths and a double-edged sword in their hands to inflict vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings with fetters, their nobles with shackles of iron, to carry out the sentence written against them. This is the glory of all his faithful people. Are you being faithful to him? Are you living a life that glorifies him? Are you in the word and doing what it says? How can you know how to serve the Lord, how to live for God? Get in his word and start doing what it says day by day by day. Just add a little more. As you learn it, apply it and walk it out. Learn it, apply it, walk out. Just keep doing the word of God. And this verse is Victory. God gave them victory. They were faithful and they were singing and praising the Lord. And the enemy was taken down. Okay? We got an enemy of our soul. All right? We all do. And he wants to take you out, take you down however he can. (laughs) But it's through our praise and worship. Getting into his presence. Speaking it out and being faithful to God. And they brought victory over the evil, uh, the just the wickedness of these nations, and we oh, and they overcame. And that is what we have to do in our own lives. So when the enemy starts flooding in, you just start worshiping and praising the Lord, and God will take care of the enemy. And it's through our faithfulness too. So be encouraged, faithfulness, 
and opening your mouth and singing and praising the Lord. All right. We're going to move on to 2 Chronicles 20. <clears throat> Bear with me. I'm going to go through some scriptures real fast. I don't know if you can keep up or not, Sister Becky, but we'll see here. 2 Chronicles 20, verse 22. 2 Chronicles 20, verse 22. And when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set an ambush against the men of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah so that they were routed. So as they came in, the enemy was there. They had to defeat the enemy. Okay, so just something in something in your own life that you're like, I, I need, I need victory in this area, Lord. I need victory. Well, what can I do? Well, the Lord set an ambush in this situation against the men, the wicked men, to overcome them, overtake them, and have victory. And it's when they began to sing and praise the Lord. So again, there's power when you open your mouth and you give God the glory and the honor. All right? Psalm 59, 16. Psalm 59, 16. It says, But I will sing of your strength. God is mighty, right? Sing of your strength. I will sing aloud of your steadfast love in the morning. How, how sweet is that? That's a song. Sing of your steadfast love in the morning. When you get up in the morning, you're just like, God, you're, you're so good to me. You're so faithful. So, so wonderful. And that's in the morning. It says, for you have been to me a fortress and a refuge in my day of my distress. It means God came through to him when he needed him most. And that we can call on the Lord in our times of need. He will be there. You be faithful to him. He is faithful 100% of the time. Give him access to pour into your life. Worship him. Praise him. Sing unto him. He says he'll be our strength. John 4.23. John 4.23. New Testament says, But the hour is coming and is now here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. He says the true worshipers. Let's, let's get in. Let's worship the Lord. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. Let's be those that are worshiping the Lord. Unabandoned. Just full love on the Lord. Unashamed. All right. Second Chronicles. I just got a few more of these I want to go through. Second Chronicles 10, 3 through 5. Second, I'm sorry. Second Corinthians. Change that. Sorry. Second Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. It says, For though we walk in the flesh, okay, we got this flesh hand, right? Though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. So when you're going through battles in your life, struggles, life throws stuff at us, right? We live in a sin filled world, so we have these struggles in life. It's not this flesh hand. We, we've got a spiritual realm out there that we are dealing with. And you have to know how to handle them. So it says, for the weapons of our warfare, how we fight these battles, how we're going to win in these battles, it says that they are not of flesh. Okay? So stop fighting things in the flesh. Stop fighting things with head knowledge. Like, I can get through this. I'll be fine. <laughs> I can do this. And work. No, the world thinks that way. Stop thinking that way. The world thinks that way. We have a God who can see us through. He's given us the way to navigate this life. And so we got to know how to do that. So he says, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power. It's going to come from him from on high to us supernaturally. We can receive what he has. It says it's from on high. And it says to destroy strongholds. Okay, so the enemy just wants to come in and wreak havoc in your life and set up these these strongholds in your life, and Jesus wants us to come and just eradicate them and bust them to pieces and bring freedom in your life. Uh, it says, who the Son has set free is free indeed. When you get that freedom, when you experience freedom in your life, there's nothing like it. And if you've experienced freedom in your life, you hold on to that, because that can happen in every area, every decision of your life. 
And I'm telling you, when you start praising God, you come from that place of victory because you're like, man, you're so good. I never could have came out of this situation without you coming through and getting me out of this dark place or getting me out of this situation. And the freedom, when, it, when the freedom was there, wow, the darkness is gone, the heaviness is gone. Uh, just come, my mind, the things I'm thinking, I'm just, I used to think horrible or uh, things of the world, and now I'm like, I think of you, God, and how to please you. Everything is churn. Freedom is just freedom in every area of your life. And when you come from those places, wow, your, your worship work is going to go up another level because <laughs> you're going to honor God because of his goodness and his faithfulness. All right, so let's continue. So it says, uh, but it has divine power to destroy strongholds because we have the weapons of warfare. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. Lots of people these days talking all sorts of things, but we got the, we got the word of God, truth. And it says, and take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ or to obey Christ. How many of you guys know your thoughts are a big part of our walk with the Lord? That you've got to get them under control. There's the battle of the mind. You've got to take all those thoughts captive. If they're not of God, don't be dwelling on them. Don't be thinking on them. Get your, get your thought life back in order according to the word of God. What's the word say? Then start thinking on those things. Philippians says, think on these things, things that are pure, lovely, a good report, and so on. Those things are praiseworthy. Think on those things. So if you're off course on those areas, bear it right back in and start thinking on those things. So we gotta knock off the other thinking. Amen? Amen. You gotta knock off that other thinking. It will go, it will lead you to other places or worldly thinking. Get back on track. Thinking on the things of the, that God wants us to think on, and watch and watch your thought life just change dramatically. What comes out of your mouth, the confession, it changes. All right, Acts. We're going to move to Acts in the New Testament. Acts 16, 25 through twenty six. And you may know this says about midnight, Paul and Silas. What were they doing? They were praying and they were singing hymns to God. Okay, so. Here they are, and it says, and they're in prison, guys. They're in prison. They're singing. Paul and Silas are singing and praising hymns to God. And in a very, like, they're in the dark place, worshiping the Lord. They could have very well said, I can't believe we're here. You guys know, how would, how would you respond in a jail, being doing the work of the Lord and being sent to prison, and now you're sitting there and shackled up? They're singing praises and hymns to God. And the prisoners listen to them. Some of you guys know what you say in the company of people, what's coming out of your mouth in the company of people, your coworkers, your family. Are, are, you, are you one way here or not indifferent with them? Or can you just say, I'm, I'm the same across the board. When I speak here with my fellow believers, the same thing I'm going to speak when I'm with my family, when I'm with my coworkers, when I'm out and about. Let's be speaking the same thing all the time. So what, what is coming out of you? What's what you're putting in? If you're putting the time in, if you're spending that time with God, that one-on-one -on -one time, it's going to come out in, in your life. So if that's what you want to come out of your life consistently, then spend that time with the Lord. Spend that one-on-one -on -one time. It will come out. What you put in, guys, comes out. And that that's Amazing, And so it says the prisoners were listening. So people are listening to you. What's coming out of your mouth? What's the confession of your mouth? And it says suddenly there was a great earthquake. And the foundations of the prison were shaken. This is their prayer. This is their singing. They're just doing what they, they know to do. You know, they, they know the Old Testament, okay? They know when they give praise. They know the Psalms when they give praise and the enemy is defeated, okay? They're acting on the word of God right here. So they're doing that. And they're in their obedience, okay? Obedience, a big, big word, obedience, okay? Maybe hard sometimes. Obedience and just doing what they do, the life they live, singing and praising God. That earthquake came and it shook the foundation. It says immediately all the doors were opened in the prison and everyone's bonds were unfastened. Freedom. Freedom came. 
So I worship the Lord. It brings freedom. Come on, if you're in a bad mood, guys, come on, I've been in a bad mood. Guess what? I turn on my praise and worship. I get my earbuds in. If I need some quiet time from kids, and I'm just like, all right, I need to go do something. I'm going to go clean or something. I put my earbuds in. I hit my worship music. I'm I'm in there, man, and my attitude shifts. <laughs> and you know, we're human, and you got to do those things. You got to get your flesh man in check. You don't let it rule you. You rule it, and you tell it no. You're going to live according to the Word of God, and you live it out. Amen. All right. Um, let's see. One more. One more. Psalm 150. Psalm 150. Verse 1 through 6. We're doing pretty good here. All right. If I'll be Pastor Brian or not, but we'll see here. We got a little bit. It's about a quarter cell. All right. Psalm 150, 1 through 6 says, Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him, praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Man, we're, it just, this is a song. Just give him praise to God. Just, God, you're so good, God. Uh, praise his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Now, this is someone who is like full. I'm telling you, full to overflowing with things to praise God for. That God has done such amazing things that they got a psalm expressing you are amazing, God. You are wonderful. You are mighty. The deeds you do. You, I mean, you just eliminate the enemy when they're wicked and they're evil and they're doing horrible things, God. You bring us freedom and you just eradicate what the evil is doing. And we get to be victors in this life. And so he's just praising. Uh, it says, praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with the tambourine dance. Man, this is some exciting stuff. They're excited. They are so full of joy. So much worship and praise God. Praise them with strings and pipe. Praise them with sounding cymbals. Praise them with loud clashing cymbals. Man, that sounds like a party going on. <laughs> now, that, that's something to get excited about, man. They, they're just full, just the overflowing. I can just imagine just the overwhelm of just amazement of what God has been doing. And then that just that amazement and wonder, it just so flows out of them that they're just, worship is all you can do. Praise is what you can do. Proclaiming who his God is, is what he was doing in that moment. And it was overwhelming, and it was coming out of him, out of a spirit man. How amazing is that? And we should come in the house of God with that attitude because we're victors. We're not victims. We're victors. We come from a place of victory. He's already paid. Christ, so we get to walk in victory, despite what the world throws at us, despite what goes on. This life is temporary, but the eternal is forever. And so we need to walk knowing that when this is, this, since we know this is temporary, we're going to fight that good fight of faith. Amen? We are going to fight the good fight of faith. Because when we get there, it's forever, it's eternal, it's ongoing, and we know we're going to reap rewards, we're going to walk in them, and God has great plans for us in heaven and in the new earth, the new creation. When all that happens down the road, we're going to live amazing lives for eternity and be blessed. And we're going to be shouting and praising and partying with Jesus. It's going to be great. Okay, now something I just wanted to touch on a little bit is when you win the battles over the enemy, so when they went to war, what happened after the war? After they won and had the victory, what did they do next? What did they gather? Spoils. Spoils, thank you. So the enemy wants to come in and wreak havoc in your life, right? So remember, still kill and destroy you in every aspect, any way he can get in. And it may not be sudden. It may just be creeping in little by little, right? And he may get a little foothold here, a little foothold there. But when we have the victory, we win in the kingdom of God. So when the enemies were defeated, God went before them and set ambushes or told them how to win the victory. Yes, I want you to go fight. Yes. No, you aren't going to have to fight this one. I'm going to set the ambush. You know, God had strategy on how us as believers can win the battles we go through. But in the end, there was always the spoils that they can gather. Isn't that so cool? So 1 Corinthians 26, 27 says, 
Uh, I'm sorry, First Chronicles. I may have said that wrong. First Chronicles 26, verse 27. It says, Out of the spoils won in battles did they dedicate to maintain the house of the Lord. So they used the spoils to enrich the house of the Lord. They brought back the spoils and divided them into the treasuries. And they helped the, the, the things of God. And there was victory. And they brought those things back, which God said, yes, bring those things back. So when the enemy wants to come in, just know you're a victor. Walk in victory. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And it says Revelation. And by the word of our testimony, we are victors in this life. We walk in victory, okay? And we have to have that mindset. We have to have that that push. That's, that has to be what pushes us. That we've already won through Jesus Christ. We're already winners. We're already victorious. We just got to walk it out by faith. Keep listening to the Spirit of God where He wants to lead us so we stay on that path of victory and not get sidetracked somewhere else. But stay on the right path, the straight and the narrow, and we will win these fights. And winning the battle in your mind, we will win those things. And then there's spoils in the end that we get to we get to <laughs> take a hold of. And and God, you know, we get to maintain some things. Our joy. Now we, we sang a lot this morning, right? About joy, joy in the house of the Lord. They're uh, trading my sorrows in the morning, there is joy. So you get to remain joyful in these situations. How many likes to be sad through all their situations? I sure don't. Down in the dumps, down in the bullies, you know. We don't we don't go there. You gotta pull yourself up and when you receive what God has, say, man, I, I want this victory, and I'm gonna take the spoils and everything there is, and I'm gonna walk this out, knowing my God and can see me through, He will see me through, and I'm gonna come through on the other side victorious. And so then you get to collect all the spoils and say, the enemy, mm -mm, he doesn't. He doesn't get to take this from me or that or my finances. He has to return sevenfold. You just start speaking the word of God. But you get to continue on your journey, on your path, where he's navigating you with joy, with the peace of God. Okay? The world doesn't have peace. Only Jesus can give the peace of God. The Prince of Peace, Jesus. He is peace. And when you've experienced his peace, you want it, and you want to hold on to it and guard it dearly and walk it out. So you get to walk in the peace of God. The world has anxiety and all that. I don't want any of that stuff. I want peace. That just puts everything to rest in your spirit, man. Because all that stuff starts turning, turning, turning. You're anxious and worried. And then when peace comes in, it just calms all that right down because it says is all my understanding. You don't necessarily understand how in the world you can be so peaceful when you're going through so much in your life, but God is seeing you through by providing you peace in us through Jesus Christ. So we get peace. We get draw the, the joy. We get the drive and the fortitude knowing that we are winners through Christ Jesus, that we've overcome. We say a lot in here, uh, adapt and overcome. And we did that a lot in leadership years past. Our motto was adapt and overcome. Anything you do, adapt to it. Don't let it overcome you. Don't let it defeat you. Adapt to figure out a way to make it work and overcome. Be overcomers. And that's how you do it. And we have lived by that. And man, have we been able to tackle a bunch of things in this life just simply by that model. Or doing things you thought you never could do because you adapted some and you overcame it. Hopefully that helps somebody. It's helped me through my life and my walk. I'm like, oh no, Lord, this is this is too hard. Oh no, I can adapt. I'm gonna adapt to this. I'm gonna find a way to overcome. How many guys know those people and the hurricane and the things they're going through? They're gonna have to adapt to some new changes. They're gonna have to adapt to a lifestyle right now that they're gonna have to work through for a while, and they're gonna have to overcome some things before they can really pull through to the other side. But they got that fortitude and that drive and they, that camaraderie and community. And they're going to see this thing through. So just like in your life, you've got to have that fortitude. You've got to have the strength of the Lord, which comes from what? The joy of the Lord. You need strength? Get the joy of the Lord in you. Receive what he has. 
Give, give everything to him. Cash cares on him. So there's spoils that we can have. And let's, let's pray. When we get victory in our life over the enemy, maybe you got saved and you're a new believer and you're like, yes, I got the, I got the passion and the drive. Bring that to the house of God. Or maybe you got free in an area or finances. God blessed you and, and made a way where you're like, there's no way. And God showed up in an amazing way. And you're like, yes. So you're going to bring that to the house of the Lord and say, God, uh, you are so faithful. And you start praising God and lifting your voice and worship. And others are like, man, she's, she's on fire. I'm going to worship God too. And it's, it spreads because people see that God is good and he is faithful. And man, they got victory in their life and they're praising God. Man, there's something to this. I'm going to start worshiping the Lord too. He's worthy. He's honorable. So uh, bring when, the, when you stomped on the enemy's head and God has brought the victory for you, bring that to the house of God and let's worship the Lord as a congregation and lift up the praise to him and see what God wants to do for us as a whole congregation. Bring it to the house of the Lord. Amen. All right. Um, I may touch on this real quick. Last but not least, we're going to talk about the full armor of God last and then we're going to wrap up. Ephesians 6. I guess you can turn there because it's kind of long. Ephesians 6, New Testament, 6, 11 through 18. Ephesians 6, 11 through 18. It says, put on the full armor of God. Now, we know this, right? We put on that full armor of God. Let's see what I got here. Thank you. All right, the full armor of God. So that you, so I got to say, so that I, so that I can withstand against the devil's schemes, his plots, his plans, his devices, the wicked things he wants to trip you up with and to steal and kill, destroy you. Okay, do you understand? We have an enemy. We already talked about that. We have an enemy of our soul. And so it says, put on the full armor of God so you can stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle, and we have to always remember this, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's not me and you, me and you, whatever, flesh to flesh. It is not that. But against rulers, against authorities, against powers of this dark world, against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. There's a spiritual war going on, a battle. So we're not fighting one another. There's there's a, there's spiritual things going on behind the scenes. And that is how we tackle things. And so then that's where it goes in and it says... In verse 13, therefore, knowing this, knowing that it's not flesh to flesh, you know, though we're not, it's not against one another, there's more at, more to it. It's a spiritual war. Things going on, spirits, demonic things going on. Thir verse 13 says, therefore, put on the full armor of God. Okay? And it does not say, therefore, okay, so we know that, put on just one piece of your armor, okay? You know, you're okay if you just put on the helmet of salvation, okay? Does it say that? It does not say that. It says put on the whole armor of God, head to toe, people, the whole attire, the whole thing. It, so it doesn't say just put on uh, the sword of the spirit. That's all you need. That's all you need. Now, is that powerful? It is powerful, right? But it says when you're, when you're standing against the schemes of the enemy, there's some measures you are going to have to take as a believer in Jesus Christ. There's no more patty caking around. This is what you're going to have to do. And they use the symbols because they, you know, they had gear. They had, they had the armor back in the day, so they used the armor. You're going to have to put on these spiritual principles. So he says in verse 13, Therefore, don't put on part of the armor. Put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, okay, doesn't say when it might come, guys, it says when it does come. So, believer, be ready, okay? Just be ready. Is there, do we fear it? No. We don't walk in fear, okay? We walk with what? A sound mind, love, power, sound mind, no fear. It says when it comes, hey, be ready, okay? I, I'm going to give you the tools, he said, on how to handle those things. So he says, so when the day evil comes, is verse 13, you may be able to stand your ground. So can you stand your ground when the enemy comes in like a flood and wants to wreak havoc in your life? 
yes, a resounding yes, you are victorious, so that you may be able to stand your ground. How cool is that? You're like, enemy, he ain't got, he didn't have a shot in my life. I am victorious. I'm going to stand, and I know how. It says, it continues, and after you have done everything, okay, once you put on that full armor of God, it says, then you can stand, okay? So don't try to stand against the enemy without first putting on the whole armor, the whole attire first, okay? Just like, all right, enemy, you you can't have me, all right? You're just standing there and just, all right, God, do your thing. No, it takes something on our part, okay? On a believer's part. There's action that we have to do on our part, okay? So what is the action? It says, stand firm then. This is what we do. Stand firm then. Okay? You're firm. You're, you are set. You're like, this is what I'm doing. With the belt of truth. So that the truth buckled around your waist. This is the whole attire that they're putting on. With the breastplate of righteousness in place. With your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith. This is a good one. Which... You can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. So when he's throwing them darts at you, you know, maybe it's thoughts in your mind. Now, all the thoughts in our mind, not necessarily from God, but can we think on things and there are thoughts? Yes. But can he shoot some things at you and you're like, that was, why did I just think of that? That was not something I would normally think on. The enemy's trying to throw things in at you. You just chill the faith, quench those fiery darts, quench those thoughts. Whatever he's throwing at you, quench him with that shield of faith. And we'll continue. It says, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. So whatever he's throwing at you, guys, get that faith up. Get that shield of faith up. Start speaking the word. Extinguish them, them darts. He, he has nothing against you. It says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. It says in verse 18, and pray in the spirit on all occasions. Pray in the spirit, okay? On all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Talk to your talk to God. He wants to hear from you. He loves you. Communicate. Just talk to him. Pray to him. Get close to him. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. So put on that armor of God. Don't just put part of it on. So when the enemy is coming in and starting to wreak havoc in your life or thoughts aren't yours, we're equipped as believers to know how to handle these things. So if you didn't know, now you know. And then you say, okay, Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this out. I'm going I'm to do what your word says and see God come through. So spend time in God's presence. Turn on the music. Get some music that worships the Lord, that is word, that feeds your spirit man. Not just any old music, but word, the music that has the word of God that feeds your spirit man. He, he needs to have that word, and it refreshes you, and it renews your thinking and your mind, and your spirit wants that, that needs that word in you. And when you get that in you, you can pour out from that place of worship. There's so much freedom that comes in his presence. And I just dare you to try it. Get close to God. Get close to God like you've never gotten close to him before. He so wants that relationship with you. Um, I was wanting to share some here. But allow the presence of God just to build your spirit, man. And the trials and the things that you go through in your life. They won't overwhelm you because you're, you know, you're victorious when you exercise your faith and walk with the word of God. Freedom comes in every aspect of your life. Amen. I think I'm going to wrap up with that. So today we learn about presence, being in the presence of God, worshiping. It brings freedom. It brings liberty. It sets the enemy afoot. <laughs> And wickedness has to go. And God will be there for you, for your battle. He will fight your battles. It's with worship. We know that one song, he will fight your battles. This is how I this is how I how I fight my battles. It's in worship. It's a it's a weapon, it's a tool, but you have to 
Open your mouth and worship and allow God to renew you and renew your mind, refresh your spirit, man. And when you walk in that, you're ready, guys. When anything comes out, you're ready. And if someone comes to you and they are needing, they need encouragement, guess what? You're at such a place that you can pour out to people and love on them and give them the word. Now, you have to read your Bible too, okay? Christians, we have to read our Bible every day, get the word of God. As Pastor Brian says, to expand your vocabulary, give the Holy Spirit words, the, the word of God to expand your vocabulary so he can speak through you and help you in this life. Because the Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance the word that you put in. But he, and that's part of what he does, the Holy Spirit, to bring the word to your remembrance. But if you don't read the word, the Holy Spirit has nothing to bring to your remembrance to help you fight battles, to help you through a situation. So equip yourself with the Word of God. Fill your spirit, man, with the Word of God so you're equipped for every battle that comes forth. And never from a place of fear, ever. Should we ever do anything for fear? But victory, being victorious, being overcomers through Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Well, let's pray. Oh, it's a little after 12. I think I did good today. <laughs> right. no, God's good. Amen? Good. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for your Word. We thank you for your truth. God, we worship you, God. I pray, Lord, that we come into another level here at Broken Change Church of passion and desire towards you, God, that is true, that is genuine, Lord, that is, that we are faithful people, God, that we come into your presence, Lord, that we are those true worshipers that come in before your presence, God, that we walk in the victory that Jesus has already provided, God, and we thank you, God, as we walk in that victory, that we are overcomers, Lord, God, that nothing that comes our way, Lord, we know that you've made a way, you've paved the way, you've given us the tools we need to be overcomers. So God, help us, Lord, to walk your word, to live your word, God. Strengthen your people, God. As we draw close, God, and you come close to us, God, I thank you for strength. I thank you for joy. I thank you for uh, freedom and deliverance, Lord. And God, the peace of God and the joy that you have, I thank you, God, that you're filling your people afresh new. I thank you for the Holy Ghost, Lord. God, that he, he moves in this house today amongst your people, God. Lord, that we are stirred this morning. Stir to live for you. Stir to not be wavering, God. That we don't go to the right or the left, Lord. That we go on the straight and the narrow path, God. That we live our lives fully for you, God. And Lord, that people may see the goodness of God in our life. And that they're drawn to you, God. So God, may we show forth your goodness of who you are, that you are mighty, that we are children of the most high God, that we serve a mighty God, and we just thank you, God, for who you are. You are worthy. You are mighty. Thank you, God. You've given us the victory. And God, help us to walk it out day after day, faithful to you, just as you are faithful to us, Lord. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. We all said? Amen. 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 Hey, Go get in your get in your quiet time with the Lord. Have fun. Enjoy his presence. See what God's going to do on your behalf. Be encouraged. He's going to refresh you. He's going to revive you and turn situations around. How many, how many of you think we'll see some situations turn around in our lives? Amen. I am with you. So let's do this together. And then bring it back to the house of God. And let's worship Next Sunday, let's come in walking in a place of victory and see what God will do. Amen? Amen. Amen. You guys be blessed. Tuesday night service, Wednesday Bible study youth group. Let's come expecting what God has. Amen. And bring someone with the, to the house of God. He wants to move. Amen. All right. Be blessed. Have a great day. Thank you.